I want to welcome everybody to our cuisine of different cultures. My name is Paula. I am with the Atlantic Institute. We are an organization that wants to promote positive dialogue between different faiths, cultures, religions. Our vision is of a peaceful world. And what better way than in learning about other cultures and stuff? Um, we do several different kinds of programs. We do this one. We also do one called Cultural Creations. Um, you can see almost everything we do virtually um, out on our Atlantic Institute, South Carolina YouTube channel. And I, I welcome you to uh, go out and see that channel and um, follow it, like it, whatever it is that you do with that one. Um, I was gonna play a video about the Atlantic Institute, but I'm, I'm having internet problems today. So um, I'm not going to do that, but don't worry, this will not drop off because I've made our wonderful chef a mm -hmm. co-host. So um, if I drop out for a couple of minutes, I will be back. Um, I wanna welcome Nicole and tell her thank you very much for doing this. And I'm now gonna turn it over to her. And if you're just coming in and you've seen in the messages that we are putting in there what um, city, state and country we're from, because um, we like to do event audits and it, it's great for my boss to see that I'm bringing people in from all over the world. So thank you again and um, go ahead, Nicole. All right, I think that's awesome as well. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chef Nicole Henry. I am in Chicago, or I'm in Evanston, right outside Chicago, Illinois. Um, I am the owner and head chef of Chickie's Kitchen Creations. Um, I call this my COVID baby, just like everyone else who got the courage and found their little hidden gems over COVID. Um, and started their own business. That's exactly what I did. So my background is culinary and hospitality. Um, and I just took a role with it and decided that I needed to be doing something instead of sitting in the house and launched this business. And so now I do kids cooking classes in my community. I do personal chef services and catering services as well. So I decided to quit my nine to five completely about two months ago and just focus steadily on this business. And so far so good and I'm enjoying it and I'm so glad to be here with you guys today. Um, I think it's so cool that we have everyone coming in from pretty much around the world um, just to uh, watch this event. And it's cooking always brings everyone together. That's what I say. <laughs> Food, everyone has to eat. Food always brings everyone together. Um, so today, what we're gonna be making is apple bread pudding. Um, I got this recipe from my great grandmother, who is known for her bread pudding in our family with a lemon sauce. And because we are in October, the fall season, I decided to why not throw apples in there because it is apple season. Um, so an apple bread pudding is what we're going to be making today. If you all have any questions, feel free to um, add it to the chat. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I was told that you all did receive the ingredients list for the recipes. Um, so I'm gonna just start off the first thing we're gonna be doing. I got the cinnamon raisin bread because for some reason, all of my local grocery stores were out of raisins. And so I said, well, let's just get cinnamon raisin bread. It has everything you pretty much need in there, the cinnamon, the raisin and your bread. And so to make uh, this famous bread pudding, we start off by uh, toasting the bread. So we'll need, the recipe calls for five pieces of bread and I'm gonna use six just to fill in the little gaps, which you'll see once we get started. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Must have this to the side. And if you have the like four, the double side toaster, this would be super handy. Um, but I don't have that, so I'm just going to make it easy for myself and put it on one big sheet pan and throw it in the oven to toast this way. All right, so I just put the oven on broil um, and I'm just gonna toast both sides. And then once that comes out, we're going to butter. Um, butter the side of the bread. So has anyone ever made bread pudding or have a famous recipe for bread pudding that you like to use? Um, 
If so, please let me know and share because I'm always open to adding different techniques and different spices to our bread pudding. Um, so a little background. The reason that we toast the bread pudding, I mean the bread in the oven or in the toaster is just to dry it out so that once we pour the milk or the custard mixture over it, um, that can absorb the bread to its fullest and get that nice, soft, gooey bread pudding that we all love. So I'm gonna go check on mine really quick. So let's see here, one side has toasted and I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it over and toast the other side. Yeah, like I said, I have it on a high broil um, and really close to the top of the oven just so it can hurry up and toast for us. In the meantime, um, if you are following along, the next thing we'll need for the custard is milk. You can honestly use any type of milk that you'd like. I'm using whole milk just because that's what my family drinks and that's what's in the refrigerator. Um, you can use almond milk. You can do like a flavored almond milk. I know they have chocolate, they have um, a hint of honey, they have vanilla almond milk. Any of those things would definitely work and would definitely add more flavor to your bread pudding, which sounds good to me one day. Maybe I'll try that actually. <laughs> um, so you'll need your milk, your butter for the bread, and then three eggs. So I'll go ahead and get that out now, get that ready. That in the bowl. And then of course your sugar. So my bread should be done. Okay. So I've got my cinnamon raisin bread toasted. If you do choose to use um, the regular just white bread, wheat bread, whatever you choose to use, that's totally fine. You can always sprinkle some cinnamon and sugar over the layers, um, which you'll see us do in a little bit. So this part is super simple. The recipe calls for about three tablespoons of butter, um, which is just literally an eyeball. You don't necessarily have to measure out three tablespoons of butter. You're literally just making sure you get the um, toast coat it with butter. And we're just gonna do one side. Butter makes everything just a little bit better. <laughs> this is my great grandmother's recipe. I'm not sure if like a traditional recipe or a recipe that you'll find online acts for butter, but I know that she puts butter on almost everything. So it makes sense why she added butter to this recipe. Um, so the next thing is whatever baking dish you choose to use, the recipe calls for 11 by seven. And I'm just gonna do a nine by nine dish uh, just because I don't need a huge uh, bread pudding for my family right now. So I chose to do a little small dish for the sake of waste and overeating. <laughs> um, so the next step is to slice the bread into three equal pieces. So let me move my camera so you can see a little better. Okay. So you're gonna slice it into three equal pieces so that it fits into your dish. And then it also gives you room to do the nick, um, nooks and crannies. So what we're gonna do is just start off by layering the first piece of bread on the bottom there, just like so. And we're gonna move this to the side and move on to the custard. So we have that bottom layer ready. And now this custard is gonna get ready so that we can uh, pour this over that. And then I'll cut up the apples and show you how each layer goes for the bread pudding. So we start off with three eggs. If 
you're not the best at cracking eggs, I do suggest you to crack the egg in a separate bowl first, um, just so no shell gets in there, or maybe you even get a bad egg. We're just gonna list this together. So we have our egg and then we have three cups of milk as well. And now really you can add at this point, this is where if you wanted to do a different type of flavored uh, bread pudding, like say it's fall season. If you want to do like a pumpkin spice season um, bread pudding, you can add some pumpkin spice seasoning. You can add vanilla extract, maybe some cinnamon or nutmeg to this mixture here. And any flavor you add right now at this point, that will be your flavor for your bread pudding. Just to give you guys a little bit of a diverse option. So we have three eggs, uh, three cups of milk, and then the recipe calls for one and a half cups of sugar. Um, but I'm just going to do one and one fourth and we'll save that little bit extra to sprinkle on top once we're done layering everything. And I know one and a half cups of sugar sounds like a lot, <laughs> but it's worth it. This is a dessert after all, or actually it can be a dessert or breakfast, whatever you choose to use it for. So we've got our egg, our milk and our sugar. So now we have our custard base. All right, and for saving time purposes, um, what you would normally do for the recipe is heat up the milk on the stove and get it nice and hot. And then what you would do is pour your egg mixture into, I mean, I'm sorry, pour your hot milk into the egg and sugar. But to save time, I decided not to do it that way because you kind of have to wait for the milk to cool down because if you pour that hot milk over the eggs, then they will scramble. Um, just for time's sake purposes, I just decided to go ahead and add it all at once. Okay. So we'll move this over here. Got our toast. So with this first layer goes down the toasted bread and then comes in the apples. So you may wonder why I didn't cook the apples first, but um, once the apples get into that hot mixture, I mean the hot oven with the milk, the bread, and in between those layers, that heat is going to soften up the apples and you won't have to worry about um, eating or chunk, biting down on something, you know, crispy, crisp, I should say. Move this to the garbage. The recipe calls for three apples, um, but again, like I said, because I'm cutting down on the menu, I mean the size of the bread pudding, I'm just going to use two. Mm -hmm. So the way I cut the apple, that might have looked weird to some people, <laughs> but in order to just avoid getting that core and having to scoop the core out or cut the core out, all you have to do is literally cut around that and that avoids that extra step of getting the core out. And you can do this with tomatoes, um, what other vegetable? You can do it with tomatoes or any other fruit or vegetable that has the seeds in the middle, bell peppers. You just cut along the outside of it and toss the middle part, it saves you a ton of time. All right, so now I have my chunks of apple. And all I'm gonna do is go ahead and slice these apples so that we can get a nice dice out of them. And so here's the first layer. So I've got my bread, we're gonna do the apples. And the amount of apples are definitely up to you. Um, I love, love, love these Granny Smith apples. I love like a tart apple. And so it's a good combination with 
that sweet we're gonna get from the cinnamon raisin bread and from that one and, and one fourth cup of sugar we just added. So we've got that and come back and now we're gonna do the second layer. All right, so at this point also, um, unfortunately I don't have the raisins and my bread already has the raisins in there. Um, instead of adding that second layer, you would go ahead and add the raisins in at this point. And actually another step you can do if you wanted to add a different type of dried fruit, apricot maybe, um, this recipe is super, super, super versatile. You can go ahead and add it and any dried fruit um, will definitely, re definitely rehydrate itself. Um, once we pour that custard over and once that custard heats up in the oven with the steam, it's definitely going to go ahead and rehydrate itself and you won't have to worry about biting down on anything. All right, second layer is done. Cut up this last bit. Sis, I used to make bread pudding when I was teaching in college. Was I don't know why? Bring food in the middle. Oh, nice. Gail, I was the uh, middle ages, and one of the des desserts they had then was bread pudding. Yes, everyone loves, loves, loves bread pudding. All right, I'm going to take some off. Actually, we can add some to the top layer. All right, so we got that. And there we go. So there you have your three layers of bread pudding. You can see that here. If you were to use that 11 by seven dish, it's a little bit wider and flatter. Um, so you may not get three layers in, but again, because I'm using this size dish, this is what I'm getting. So once we have this set, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the custard over the bread. I'm just gonna pour it back into this measuring cup just so that I can make it easier for myself. All right. And you just take your custard and simply pour it over the bread and the apple mixture or layers, I should say. And at this point, you see there's still, you can see all the milk down in there. So this is kind of a waiting game at this point. <laughs> um, what you want to do, you can just take a large spoon and start pressing down on the uh, bread and the apples. And this will help the milk absorb into that bread. So this normally takes about, I would say anywhere from five to 10 minutes to fully absorb. And you want to make sure that you get as much milk absorb as possible um, because you don't want to eat a soupy bread pudding at all. So the longer it um, sits and absorbs, the more moist it will be at the end. And you're like, how is all of this milk going to absorb <laughs> these little pieces of bread? But it actually works because that's what I thought. That's what I thought of at first when I first made bread pudding. So you see, it's at the top here. What I'm going to do is just let it sit for maybe about ten minutes, and then pour the rest of my egg mixture over the top and keep pressing it down until um, it's fully absorbed. All right. Perfect. So the next thing we're gonna do, um, so you should just move and move and move. And the next thing we're gonna do is move on to um, the lemon sauce. Now, I'm not sure, again, if the lemon sauce is my great grandmother's thing or is it a traditional thing to do lemon sauce over your bread pudding. This is what I was taught when I was younger. And this is all I know. This is how, the only way I know how to eat bread pudding is with the lemon sauce. Um, and it's super, super simple to make. It's um, what four ingredients. So all you need is a cup of water, 
cornstarch, some more sugar, and one whole lemon. So I'll start off by getting one cup of sugar, I mean, I'm sorry, one cup of water. All right, and I'm gonna put this on the stove to boil. So you can just crank it up to high. Um, and then we'll get our sugar and cornstarch mixture together. So I'm just gonna grab a bowl. And you'll need three fourths cup of sugar. <clears throat> and then about two teaspoons of cornstarch. area, grab a spoon. All right, we're gonna mix this together. So once that water starts to boil, we're literally gonna just add this uh, sugar and cornstarch mixture to it. I'm sorry, I left out a ingredient, butter. That's what we'll see, I mean, add to the sauce at the end, but you'll see that. So once the water, water starts to boil, I'll go ahead and add this sugar and cornstarch. Um, the reason why we're not adding it all at once is because once the water gets hot enough, the cornstarch will dissolve easily, the sugar will dissolve easily, and it saves us a lot of time of just standing there waiting for everything to dissolve and stirring. Almost. I'll bring back the bread. Put in. Oh, what did I do with my spoon? Here we go. So as you can see, I don't know if you noticed before, um, when I first start pressing down, I couldn't even press down the bread to get underneath that milk mixture. So now you can tell that the bread is starting to absorb that milk custard. And just keep pressing down every couple of minutes or so. Normally I would just walk away from this and let it do its thing. Um, but for this class purpose, I'm just gonna sh keep showing you this just so you can see the process of the egg. And you'll see that it's, I'll keep forgetting about this camera. <laughs> you'll see that it's swelling up, oops, swelling up towards the top. Just keep pressing that down. And when it's cooking in the oven, it's actually going to blow up. Um, so it's gonna look like it might overflow, but it won't. Don't be, don't be nervous. It's just gonna blow up because of that egg um, and milk mixture. All of that steam is gonna make it rise. Just like if you were baking a bread, um, a loaf of bread. And I wanna know what the oven temperature is. Oh, I'm sorry, 350. Yes, the oven temperature is 350. I already have that set going. So I'm going to bring you all over here. So I have the water boiling, but simmering, but it's almost to a boil. Just gonna go ahead and add that cornstarch and sugar. And it doesn't take that long for the water to start thickening up. So right now you can see it's still super thin. Maybe about two or three minutes or so. And then once it cools down, it'll get even thicker, of course. So the sugar's almost dissolved down in there. So it's not thickening up just yet. I'll let that work for a little bit. 
And for the butter, we're adding one tablespoon of butter to the lemon sauce. And we're gonna add one, a juice of one whole lemon. So I'll get that ready. Right there. So now you can see as I stir, I don't know if you can tell just from those waves that it's definitely thickened up a little bit. So I'm gonna let this keep boiling for about maybe two more minutes, just so it can fully absorb. I'll get my tablespoon of butter ready. All right, that's perfect. So I'm going to bring you guys back over here actually, just so you can see this process. So I have the heat on high, just so it can hurry up and cook for us. And this is the final step here. So I know you can see the difference between that water or uh, the thinness of the water, and now you can tell that it's definitely thickened up. Just they want to know if you're using butter or margarine. Oh, you know what? This is a butter mixture. <laughs> the person's like, I don't know, I just grabbed something off the shelf, honestly. I'm using this Earth Balance organic butter, original butter spread. But honestly, butter or margarine, either or, does the trick. Get you guys back over here, turn the heat off. Okay. So we have it nice and thick. We're gonna go ahead and add the butter. One tablespoon of butter, and then the juice of a whole lemon. Watch out for the seeds. I normally like to squeeze the lemon face up just so you can catch all those seeds. One did slip away from me though. Go ahead and spoon that out. Or if you have one of those um, little lemon grinders, that would work as well. They're asking if you would go over the steps for the, the sauce again, please. Oh, of course. So super simple. I started off with one cup of water and let that come to a boil on the stove. Um, and then I went ahead and mixed together um, the one cup of sugar and two teaspoons of cornstarch. And once the water came up to a boil, I added that, added the sugar and cornstarch to the water and just let that boil on the stove. I would say about three minutes um, until it got thick, just constantly stirring, 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 um, and you'll notice the difference. And then once that mixture was complete, I just brought it back over here, added one full juice of one full lemon and one tablespoon of butter. And this is the mixture here. And so at this point, what you do is just pour this into your serving bowl, pour this into a separate bowl. And as it cools down, it will thicken up some more. And it'll be a nice lemon thick sauce for you to pour over your bread pudding. Okay. I'm gonna set that to the side here and bring back the bread pudding. So now you can tell that most of that milk mixture has absorbed. I'm gonna keep pressing it down here. All right. So I would say a total sitting time of 15 minutes 
keep pressing down every five minutes or so until majority of that milk is absorbed. And then what we're gonna do is add a sprinkle of sugar and a sprinkle of cinnamon right over the top. So you wouldn't do it at this point. You do want to wait until that milk has absorbed a lot more. Um, but for our purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and complete that step so everyone can see. So I just did a really thin layer of cinnamon over the top and follow that up with a really thin layer of sugar just to give it that nice crunch top thing that I love. And at this point, we would leave it uncovered and put it in the oven um, on 350 for about 30 minutes. And I do have one done already. So I went ahead and baked one already. Um, let's see, I'll do this camera here. So this is the bread pudding. I went and cut a big chunk out just to show you all. Um, don't be alarmed by the outside of it. That is the sugar from the cinnamon bread and the sugar that we put over the top because it does rise up in the oven and it cooled back down and came back to its normal level. All of the sugar kind of caramelized around the edges. This is the final product. And I went ahead and sliced a piece for you all can see here. And I know it's kind of dark on my end, but if I can show you the layers, you can see the layers that we did and also the little bites of um, apple. And then the final step, you don't have to, you can either leave it as is, eat it just like that, or get a nice scoop of whatever your favorite ice cream is. You can do vanilla. My favorite is Southern butter pecan. And you can take a scoop of that, put it right on top. I'll show you all the final sauce. This is the lemon sauce that I did from earlier. And you can tell that it's definitely much thicker than what we started off with or what we just finished. And you'll go ahead and just spoon that right over your bread pudding and ice cream. I dusted it with some powdered sugar for presentation purposes. And this is your final product here. So this is your apple bread pudding with a scoop of butter pecan ice cream for my liking. <laughs> and that is all. Any questions? Any other questions? Sounds good. Oh, pear would be great as well. That's a great idea. I never thought of that. What kind of apples? Um, the apples that I used is the Granny Smith apples. Um, just because I love that tart, the tartness of the Granny Smith apple. You can honestly use any apple you'd like, Gala. I feel like Gala or from the past, just baking with apples, like making an apple pie, Gala apples kind of mush up too much for me. And I love the texture of, um, just the texture of things in general in my food. And so the apples kind of hold, the uh, Granny Smith apples, I'm sorry, kind of hold its texture um, in the bread pudding while baking. <laughs> oh, Chris and hold up well in the oven. Yes. Honey, honey, Chris holds up well. Oh, honey, Chris apples. There you go. That's another option for you to use as well. So I hope you all make this at home. It is the perfect season. It's getting cold outside in most places. I know on the East Coast, I have my sister lives in uh, Baltimore. She said it was just 80 degrees yesterday. Here in Chicago, we're in 60s, cold and raining. So <laughs> maybe a few weeks and you guys will be officially in the fall weather, but this is definitely a great dish for you to bring um, to any family event. Super easy and super quick to make. Throw it in the oven, get ready and go about your day. Do you have so I wanna thank Nicole 
Yes. Um, for those of you who joined late, if you could put in the chat where you're from and if you're just using your first name, your last name, and you can uh, chat me privately, send a message to me privately. Um, also, I am going to be sending this uh, recipe to everybody that was on this uh, Zoom call. So make sure I have your email address that you want that to go to um, and look for it later today. It's a picture, so I will put it in the body of the email as well as an attachment. Um, and the, the recipe, um, and you, like I said, you can private chat me. You don't have to chat to everybody, your private email address and all of that. Um, any more questions? I see here in the comments that someone suggested doing pear, figs, or even bourbon. Bourbon is an awesome, awesome idea. <laughs> that is super good. You can even maybe put bourbon in the lemon sauce and make it a lemon bourbon sauce as well. Maybe just add a little bit more cornstarch for it to thicken up. That would be good. Raisins. Yes, raisins go into the recipe. So I used a cinnamon raisin bread, so it already had that in the bread. But if you use a regular white bread or whatever your favorite bread is, um, you can just buy some dried raisins and layer it on, I mean, layer it into that um, bread pudding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I truly, truly, truly enjoyed it and wish I was there so I can meet you all personally in person. Thank you all for joining so much. Um, you can check me out on Instagram. You can also look me up on Facebook um, at Chickie's Kitchen Creations, um, catering, personal chef, and I do cooking classes just for you all that joined late, uh, just a little background about myself. I do all three of those things just from starting up this business during the shutdown and COVID. <laughs> but I truly enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much for joining in and watching. Thank you again, everyone. Have a great day. Have a good day. Bye-bye.